Palestine will be free. All right, we're gonna head up to Baltimore Avenue, and then we're gonna go east on Baltimore until we get to the DA's office. All right. All right.这是一个工会组织的就好多进步工会联合在一起组织的游行他们的牌子是会去塞尔尤啊对吧你站队你到底站在哪一边到底是站在人民一边还站在地步money for jobs and education not for war and occupation 就是说把金钱财政花在就业和教育上而不是花在战争和占领上 对的警察陪着走，属于开路的吧？Free Palestine, Free Palestine。哎呦，这到了我过去住的地方了，原来就住在这个十字路口的左边啊，太熟悉了，这是七四年来中南美国的时候。
The workers united will never be defeated. 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 The students will never be defeated. The students and workers will never be defeated. Students and workers united will never be defeated.
饭的，宾饭店的人也在看。
supremacy and colonialism, and that the United States military and the Israeli occupation forces are the most prominent terrorist entities of the modern world. <laughs> With the cruel invasion of Rafah abroad and the brutalization of our loved ones here at home, I know things seem grim. But the tide is turning and it is only a matter of time. As Allah says in chapter 4 of the Quran, O oh, you who have believed, be persistently standing firm in justice, witnesses for God, even if it be against yourselves, your parents, or your relatives. So we must keep the momentum, keep walking out, keep protesting, keep calling Congress, keep donating, and most importantly, keep praying. Because the fate of a liberated Palestine, and in turn a world free from aggression, corruption, and oppression, depends on.这些游行队伍你看好家伙这么多车这边有骑自行车的警察机动机动警察我们现在到了宾大的校园区了我们要现在把车又堵上了一路上都堵车前边也堵上了在宾大的校园要穿过去我们的目的地就是学生扎营的上看那个地方然后这些都是社会人士工会的各个工会的不同工会都是自发的这个口号就是让 我们不会停止，我们不会休息，不达目的不该休息意思。这在大学里边，呃，现在比较普遍的一种声音。啊，当然这个声音呢，也有意思，它是用资本的逻辑，就是不投资。
，所以还是拿钱说话。但是作为一个学校呢，学生能提出什么更具体的要求呢？这个也是一个比较具体的要求。虽然他这个要求呢，还是资本主义的逻辑。所以我想问问这些。社团的这些呃活动的组织者，他们是怎么看这个问题的？我们马上就到了那个扎营地点了，啊，这就是。呃，以前扎营的地方，这条路一路走过来，前边就是扎营地了。啊，左前方就是图书馆，右前方就是扎营的帐篷。啊、看到了这个，都是扎营的学生。就是工人，社区的工人支持学生扎营。你看，大家都支持学生在这扎营。这已经快放假了，所以学生还能扎营多长时间还不太清楚。要把以色列犹太人的历史给放弃，然后都一块争论，啊，争论，但是是,是非常少数的人，大多数美国的美国的老百姓还是越来越多的反对这种种族灭绝的，但是个别的也有。
come around and, and link arms. So you're compelled. I'm Clancy. We are graduate workers here at the University of Pennsylvania with Get Up UAW. I'm speaking to you today as a worker in the Penn community, as a member of our Philly community, and as someone who is deeply disgusted every day by the actions and inactions of Penn as an institution. This university, which is supposed to serve its students, faculty, and workers in the spirit of the pursuit of knowledge, has repeatedly demonstrated in the past year that its loyalty lies not with its own community, the people here tonight, but with its outside interests of its trustees, donors, and other influencers who threaten to tarnish its prestigious reputation if it does not comply with their wishes. From the performative outrage over the presence of the Palestine Rights Literature Festival last fall to the nationally televised ousting of our former university president, Liz McGill, this school's donors, like Mark Rowan, have shown that they will stop at nothing to stifle any dissent from their preferred narrative and intend on silencing the growing student movement here and around the world. This is echoed in the extreme violence we've seen imposed on other peaceful student protesters and in institutions like Columbia and UCLA. In the past weeks following the disbandment of Penn Against the Occupation as a student group here and the establishment of the Gaza Solidarity Encampment that stands next to us, Interim President Larry Jameson and Provost John Jackson have repeatedly stated that this peaceful demonstration in support of the people of Gaza must be disbanded because it represents a threat to the safety of our campus. There is an extreme irony to this, considering that Penn continues to minimize the threats of and demonstrated violence by counter-protesters, who just days ago gleefully threatened to do UCLA 2.0 to this brave students here at the encampment. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Penn also continues to celebrate the presence of Ghost Robotics, a startup company on campus that produces military robots used by Israel in their illegal war against Palestine. This request is treated as an impossible fantasy that would be bad for business by Penn and every other university in this country save one. Evergreen State in Washington recently became the first U.S. university to fully divest from Israel. In 2003, Rachel Corey, a student from Evergreen State, was killed in Rafah by the Israeli army, crushed to death by a bulldozer that was demolishing Palestinian homes. What will Penn's own community have to do to convince it to listen to the will of the people and not the demands of its billionaire trustees? In her diary, Rachel said, this has to stop. I think it is a good idea for all of us to drop everything and make it stop. The brave workers and students at Penn in this encampment have shown that they are willing to do this and to come together in collective action to bring a voice to the Palestinian people and to the voiceless in these trying times. As workers, as students, there is really old Massive support. So massive that without it, the genocide could not have taken place and cannot continue. So much so that we can say that this is a genocide perpetrated jointly by Israel and the U.S. This is your legacy, President Biden, the supporter and enabler of Israel's genocide against the Palestinians in Gaza. President who showed flagrant disregard for the institutions of international law, especially the highest court of the UN, the International Court of Justice, that has ruled in late January that Israel's assault on Gaza is so destructive based on such explicit statements of intent to destroy by Israeli leaders and senior army officers that it is plausibly genocide. She is perpetrating genocide. They know of people who are doubling down. Free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! We are standing, as Jewish history calls on us to do, with a people facing seven months of genocidal violence now. We are here, Dr. Weizmann and your board members, to call on the university to disclose its ties with Israel universities and companies involved deeply, complicit in this genocide. Right. Thank you.
best from them because we know another truth that Israel universities are complicit now for decades in Israeli occupation, oppression, and mass violence against Palestinians for decades. We are here, Dr. Weizmann, and we will remain here because we, Jews, Muslims, Palestinians, Arabs, black people, men, women, queer people, we stand together for truth, for justice. We stand against the settler colonialism and genocidal violence that you have shamefully chosen to support. This is here, here is an anti-racist space. It is not funded. It is not funded by outside groups, as your letter alleges. I have to say, laughing out loud at this, because coming from a group of donors. This is an anti-racist space driven by the ethics of Jewish history. And I say this as a Jew and a scholar of Jewish history and the Holocaust. The ethics of always placing at the center the voices the perspectives, the knowledge of those who face state violence, not the violent state that seeks to destroy and erase them. We call on you, University President Jameson, to stand with us now on the right side of history. with another Israeli Jewish Holocaust scholar, Dr. Omer Barto, speaking at the encampment. We sent a letter to you after our visit here, President Jameson, calling on you to support your wonderful and courageous and curious students. We reminded you that today's anti-Semitism, just as in the past, emanates from the extreme right motivated by a white supremacist view of the world that targets, in addition to Jews, Muslims and Arabs and black people and queer people and others. In other words, precisely the people such as your students here at the encampment. The weaponization? The weaponization of anti-Semitism to portray them, you, us as anti-Semites in order to silence critique of a genocidal regime is shameful. It also puts Jews in danger, including the many Jews here at the UPenn encampment. President Jameson, do not put your students in danger. Many colleagues of mine and of Omer, other Holocaust and Genocide Studies scholars, also wrote to you to remind you that this is indeed your job, at the very least, to protect your students. And we would hope to listen to them, to engage with them, especially when they, when you, when all of you are here to struggle, to stop a genocide, and to show us what a future beyond settler colonialism and white supremacy could and should look like. Palestine, Israel, also here in the US and in other places. You embody, therefore, what you write and say, Palestine will free us all. And this renders the Gaza Solidarity Encampments one of the most genuine expressions today of a real struggle against anti-Semitism. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you. And may we all soon see a free, free, free Palestine. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Mateo. I'm a member of... <laughs> Yay, Mateo! <laughs> Um, I'm a member of AFSCME District Council 47, Local 397. And I work at the Penn Museum here at the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, boo. <laughs> um, I am also a proud member of Unity Caucus. Shout out, Unity. Um, I'm going to 
going to talk badly about Penn, if that's okay with everybody. <laughs> Great. Um, okay, well, I've been employed at Penn for a little over a year now, uh, but it took me far less time than that to truly understand the enormous amount of damage the institution has caused to the city of Philadelphia, damage that has reverberated throughout the rest of the world. We have seen firsthand the university's complete disregard for human dignity. We see it in the way they treat their employees through atrocious union busting. Uh, their community members through ruthless gentrification and the violent mishandling of ancestral remains. There's some here local 274 we are the union of hospitality casino and food service workers I'm a cook down at the Philadelphia Airport以色列的法西斯种族灭绝的政策所以他们现在开始往或者下下周是什么样难说 University of Delaware 我曾经教过书的那个大学的学生零星的支持以色列的 但是他们, 啊, 